be populated so fastly. Those 70 became millions. Matter of fact, there were more of them than it was Egyptians in the land. Well, Pharaoh's looked out and he figured out, well now, somehow, we got to put a stop to this population. Simply because if war should break out, and all of these Israelites join them rather than us, we've had it. We must stop it. So he informed the midwives, when you go to see about the Hebrew women, during their process of labor, when you find out that it's a male baby, I want you to kill it. But if it happened to be a female baby, let her live. But the Bible says that the women that went around that to, to, to give aid to the women that were in labor, what, what, is the, what was the old name you used to call them? Uh, midwives, thank you, sir. Midwives. Because of the fact they knew about God and they, they, they feared him. They would not follow the king's advice. And when the king found out that they were not doing what he had asked or demanded them to do, he called them back in to his presence. What is this that you're doing? You, you, you're not doing what I asked you to do. I deliberately told you, distinctively so, that when, when the babies come out, and it was a, a man child to kill it, but if it be a woman child, let it live. Now you have deliberately gone against my command. Well, the explanation to him was, well, oh, King, you see, the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women are. For they can, they can go through the process without it being known. So the king thought, well, now i got to come up with another solution here. So he decided to take all boy babies and have them thrown into the Nile River to drown. But that was the time when Moses came forth. And his mother hid him out to keep him, from be, keep him from being known that he was living. The Bible says eventually she put him into a basket and pitched the basket with slime and set the basket in the Nile River and gave it a shell. And Moses' sister Marion watched to see what would happen. The Bible also said that Pharaoh's daughter went down to the river to take a bath. And she beheld that basket. And one of, one of her maidens went and brought the basket back to her. And she discovered that it was 
a, ch a Hebrew child. Just about that time, Marion walks up. And she asks Pharaoh's daughter, would you like for me to find someone to nurse this child? That's the way God works. They carried Moses back to his mother that nursed him until he was weaned. Well, as the time rocked on, Pharaoh's decided that I'm going to make their task much harder than what it has been. You see, first of all, he was supplying the straw for the bricks to be made. After he decided to put this hard task upon them, he made them go out and hustle their own straw. Yet, he wanted the same amount of brick being done daily. They began to cry and to moan and groan. And God heard them because he seen their oppression. That is when he called Moses and said, come here. I want you to go down in Egypt. Go back to where you came from. And tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Tell him that I am said to let my people go. But now, if I ever been a people to know what God has done, it should have been the Hebrew people in, his, in, in, in Egypt. For they had gone through situations that no other person known of at that time had gone through. And during the process, these are some of the things that they witnessed, which should have given them the confidence of the Almighty God. You see, when, when, when God takes us through something to where we need to be, that shouldn't be forgotten. Because I know of many things God has brought me through. And every once in a while, to come up again. You see, they had seen water from the Nile turn to blood. They had seen frogs heaped up all over Egypt. They had seen balls on the cattle, locusts flew in, ate up all of the greenery. And the Bible said that when, when, uh, when, when Pharaoh talked to Moses and asked him to please take them away, and, and, and you, can, you can go and serve your God. When they had locusts, Stacked up in heaps, mountains of locusts. They had gone through the experience of the 
Passover.